Okay, let's begin, huh? Like two or two, yes. Uh, thank you so much for coming today. Uh, Pucha and myself, we created this webinar, this three-part webinar and talking about uh, books and publishing and what's important, what's not important. And we created like a three-part series. And today we talk about uh, your readers and why it's important to understand who your readers are, how to define them, uh, what's important. In two weeks, we have our second part, and this is all about like the technical stuff, like keywords, categories, um, SEO, description text, Amazon, and so on. And the third part is all about branding, cover design, post design for social media, and so on. So if you want to like um, follow up the the next webinar is in two weeks, and the last webinar is November 9th. Yes. So um, I think for this webinar, we'll, we will be discussing the importance of understanding your audience. And then uh, from, my from my side, I'll be helping you understand how to use social media as a way to understand your readers so you're able to get to your goals faster um, uh, to help you with your goals when it comes to publishing a book. Yeah, and we want to introduce us ourselves a little bit. So I'm Wiebke, uh, I'm from Germany, do you mind hear my accent? <laughs> And I'm the founder of Digital Authors, which is a self-publishing uh, agency. Um, and I started self-publishing myself in 2018. And I hit the German bestseller list in 2019 with my first book, which was amazing. Um, and because of this, I could... Um, uh, so I could like I could leave my job, my day job in a PR agency in Berlin and just like go full time writing and doing doing the pandemic, like in 2020, a lot of people came to me and asked, hey, how did you do this? How can you live just from self-publishing? And I started uh, coaching people how to do it and so on. And after like, I don't know, after the months, I also figured uh, maybe it's better to really offer like a service and help people, you know, to get the best out of their books. And today I have an agency, a little team which helps out. And we do like um, we do all the publishing side, like self-publishing, cover designs, layout designs, market analysis, um, marketing strategies for authors and really help them to self-publish their books. So my name is Pooja. Um, I'm in the United States. I live in St. Louis, Missouri. I'm the founder of The Novice, and I help authors market, th market their books through building a loyal audience on social media, as well as repurposing their content into different mediums. So for me, I started solely in social media, and I think I realized um, it was kind of a broad service to do. And I wanted to focus on something uh, more meaningful. And for me, I've I've always been told from a young age that education is is something that you can't be taken that cannot be taken away from you. And I know that books give you um, they're probably one of the most affordable ways to access to education. And that's why I was passionate a bit about like focusing on book marketing. And um, I realized that um, a lot of these books, specifically for nonfiction books, a lot of the content can be repurposed into different areas. Because I would say that um, some people use the books um, as a way, as a lead gen tool, and it could easily be repurposed in like a podcast that they're also using as well as a marketing tool. So it's kind of just helping them market their books uh, so they don't have to feel like they're relying on like one aspect of marketing or they feel like they have they're burdened by uh, a huge workload of marketing material when they can just use utilize the ones that they already have. 
So yeah, the importance of understanding your audience. Uh, before we start, I would like to hear from you. Um, who here has written a book? Can you like, maybe there's like, I think a function you can like show us your hands. Like, yeah, one. Okay, and who here has like, you written a book, you published a book, like who has published a book? Oh, perfect. And after you wrote and published your book, have you done any market research, any like anything to understand your niche, your target audience, uh, your competitor, your jungle? You can also like feel free to write it in a chat or so, like a yes or no. Yeah, so, and this is like a um, common, I don't want to say mistake because it's like, it's a huge amount of work to just write and publish your book, but also a lot of also um, forget to really hone in into like understanding like the market, the marketing side of it, like the readers for whom you are writing. Because basically a book, you don't write a book for yourself. Like the book is not about yourself. You are the author. You are like a channel of something else. It's about the reader and the people who are you writing for. And this is super important. This is the most important thing you have to understand. It's about your readers. So in this regard, you have to understand the reader to do any promotion of your book. Because like, just for example, take social media. If, um, if you just post what feels good to you, and has nothing to do with your readers, or you don't understand, okay, which kind of people are interested in, in the subject I offer, then you're just like posting something, it's super, super insightful for yourself, but nobody really gets, you know, nobody resonate with it, and then you're losing like a huge amount of potential to really, um, you know, promote your book, get more sales in, and get your expertise out, and so on. So the first Super important thing is understand that your book is not about you, it's about your readers. And for this, we have to understand who your reader, readers are. Yeah, because as an author, it's essential to know your audience and their needs in order to create content that resonates with them. And this leads to really create like a loyal fan base and, you know, um, building up an audience and uh, reaching to more readers and connecting to more people. But in order to understand this, you have to understand your readers. And this is what we're um, going to help you today with. So the importance of understanding your audience, um, knowing your audience can help you craft a compelling story. And why is this? Obviously, like if you write, especially a nonfiction book, if you write anything in nonfiction, um, when you understand for whom you're writing, when you understand the pain points of your target audience, and we do some exercise a little bit later, so you really have, you can- uh, Understanding your audience? Yeah. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, I hear. You. Can you hear me? Can you hear yeah. me? <laughs> okay, let me just check my internet. Okay, just a second. I have to change my internet connection. I hope uh, we don't disconnect. Sorry. Okay, are you guys back? Um, and then when it comes to your audience, you can also your audience pretty well. 
then you can create better, create more relevant, It helps them understand exactly like uh, what type of content that resonates with them. So it's kind of just helping them, helping you create the language and understanding the language that they speak. So you're able to target them a lot easier and it helps them build loyalty within it. So within the overview, uh, we're going to help you understand how to find your reader the importance of understanding your readers and how to determine if you're targeting the right audience. Yeah, who is your reader? Um, a very, very simple exercise is in order to understand your reader, you kind of have to understand yourself because the first reader is yourself. And this sounds contradictory to what I said before, but you are as well your target group. So if you like, if you have a background in finance and then you write a book about money and then um, and think about why you were interested in this subject, how you can help people, what is your expertise? How did you overcome your own obstacles and your own fear and everything? So, and then you you basically write a little like roadmap for your readers um, to help them, you know, um, overcoming um, some difficulties in their life, which you mastered already, you know? And, um, and the simple exercise to understand who your reader is, understand yourself and write down like, okay, I'm female, between 35, 45. So this is usually my target group because you know I'm writing for people who have like the same background or the same like age groups and so on. And those people are usually resonating um, better with me. So um, what's your age? What's your background? What's your educational background? Uh, which, which culture you come from? Which country? Um, what is your profession? Uh, what is your, where, where are your pain points? Why did you wrote your book? Um, and how can you help your readers today with, with the knowledge you have? And you don't have to be perfect. You just have to be basically one step ahead of your readers and help them to overcome what you already overcame. Yeah, and once you really understand your readers uh, and you wrote down like a little roadmap and some, um, you know, significance uh, about yourself and really also um, understand others. This, all this knowledge is important to also feed the Amazon algorithm. Um, and this is, this really helps you to um, become visible on Amazon uh, and any other bookshelf, but Amazon is the most important ones because uh, I think in the US, 90% of all book sales go through Amazon. In Europe, it's a little bit less, it's like 50-50, so Amazon is not such important like in the US, but in the English speaking um, book market, it's, it's Amazon is a big player. So, and you have to understand, once you understand your readers, you also understand what are they searching for, which means which keywords they are using, which categories they are reading, uh, which other books in your genre they are drawn to, and so on. And all this helps you to feed the Amazon algorithm, and Amazon helps you then to be visible. Um, and the Amazon algorithm really takes an account, like I said before, keywords. You have to understand what's your what your readers are searching for. For example, let's stay with like the finance book. Um, it makes no sense like putting some keywords in in like sustainability or something. You know, obviously, like you have to really um, 
do like a keyword research and you can use Amazon for this. Um, you just type in, in Amazon, some keywords like finance books, and then they give you some suggestions for the keywords. What we do, for example, we have like a software and when we do like market analysis for our authors, um, we also do like a little Amazon um, research and then they give us some suggestions and then we use those putting it in our software and then we see, okay, so many people also, or so many books in this in this genre also using these keywords. This makes so much money. Um, the volume of research is high or not. The competitor of this isn't that. So this is like really a, an in-depth um, Amazon algorithm um, a keyword research. And then you have to understand the categories. Um, and Amazon just expand um, the categories. So before you could just use uh, two categories to put in. Um, all the information, the metadata, when you um, upload a book, and now it's like three. And this is super important to really put in categories, your readers also, you know, searching. Um, because um, Amazon has 16,000 categories, and you really have to understand uh, who your readers are, which kind of keywords they're using, um, and to place yourself. Uh, in the right, you know, categories. And but the next webinar, we we talking a little bit, you know, more about the subject. But um, yeah, super important. Then reviews, and I put like a question mark behind it. Um, do you think reviews are important for the Amazon algorithm? Yeah, a lot of people think. Amazon, if we need reviews for the Amazon algorithm, um, that Amazon really helps us to make more sales and so on. And which is actually not true. Because if a book has 60 reviews or two, doesn't matter for the Amazon algorithm, because Amazon wanna just wanna see numbers like sales, clicks. And if a book has a thousand reviews or not, it doesn't matter. It just looks better, but at the end, it doesn't matter. So a lot of people, a lot of authors focusing on getting reviews in, but this doesn't help with the sales, really. It's just a nice, um, like, social proof, you know, that, like, other people see, oh, it has so many reviews and so on, but it's, for yourselves, you know, it's it doesn't matter, really. It just looks nice. What matters though is uh, people also buying section. Like if you place yourself good, like using really appropriate um, keywords in your genre, like put yourself in the right categories, then Amazon suggests you in the section people also buying, which is super important, like because this is basically free marketing. And then Amazon suggests your book for people who also like books, like let's say in the finance section. Section. So um, in order to do this and place yourself right, you really have to understand, like I said, your readers, which keywords they're using and so on and so on. Um, and for this, again, first understand yourself and see yourself as you know the first ideal reader, your own target group, and like and write it down. Always write it down on a piece of paper. Maybe also talk with a friend about it um, to you know to get some feedback uh, when you create your own ideal reader um, and test test some keywords. Use Amazon, you know, put some keywords in and just test um, which kind of keywords you get. Yeah. I don't know why. I'm so sorry about that. Yeah. 15. Then um, what's also super important is uh, putting in the wide metadata, you know, which means a title, a subtitle, and the SEO description text. And here again, it's important for the title and subtitle, don't make it too complicated and use some keywords. Use keywords like um, people really searching for. And this sometimes sounds like, you know, you want to have a fancy title and something really special, but for the algorithm, it really makes more sense putting in some, some keywords, um, at least in a subtitle. Like, for example, if your keyword is like, um, 
financially independency, um, which sounds a little bit lame, but if this is your biggest keyword, like put it somewhere in a subtitle. You know, this really helps the algorithm to, to find you. Same with SEO description text. Like, um, and I would highly, highly recommend hiring someone to write your little text like really an expert to give you, um, you know, some decent keywords and like a little description text, the same with the blurb. Um, because you as an author, you usually, um, you don't have an overview anymore. You don't have like a objective view on your own book and your own writing. And when it comes to this like SEO description text or the blurb, it's harder for an author to write like something like on point using some keywords and have like this distant view on it than someone like an expert to can, you know, can you really help um, to fine tune all the metadata, which is really essential for the Amazon algorithm and that in the end you get found. Okay, so I am going to be discussing the importance of understanding your readers and mine is focusing more on social media part of it. So when it comes to understanding your readers, uh, specifically for social media, um, you can create content, more tailored content that's better for your audience. And when you create better content for your audience that resonates with them, you can reach your goals faster um, because you're building a a loyal loyalty with that person and you're building a personal connection. And then uh, the last one is it saves you more time knowing your audience. So I know this, this webinar is focusing, one part of it is focusing on social media, but social media is not the only way to market a book. There's plenty of ways to market a book. And if you know your demographics and you know um, where, where they lie when it comes to marketing, you can spend your time and efforts in that area and it saves you more time. So you don't feel like you're just doing everything or trying to do all of the marketing expenses. Um, so I categorize this into two different parts. So I wanted to show how, how do you even understand or go about figuring out your audience um, so one way to do it, and I would say you could utilize ChatGPT or any, um, generative AI to help you just as a starting point when it comes to creating a persona. Um, I will give you a very brief idea of what a persona is, but we'll dive deeper into, um, more of what a reader persona or a persona is in general. But I would say like, I've probably have started using ChatGPT and then created a persona or hypothetical person or a hypothetical reader who would read my uh, book. And then I would add like different key points of uh, what are their demographics? What are their motivations, pain points? And give me a customer journey. So I have like something to go off of. Um, and then the second part of the thing is actually doing the research to validate um, what your persona is. So um, I would, yeah, so for ChatGPT, I would use it as a starting point and then being able to validate all of those different demographics or different types of suggestions through data. So you make sure, you make sure that you know um, that what you're seeing is valid and correct. So here are a couple of different ways that you can do it through data. So one way is to conduct a survey. And I would say this comes with a caveat because when it comes to conducting surveys, a lot of people don't want to take surveys unless they have an incentive. So just to make sure to have an incentive when it comes to you creating a survey, or you could easily break it up where um, I know a lot of social media, uh, social media platforms offer polls so you could do like one question. And I would say that most people are more inclined to just doing a poll versus a like a 10 question survey at once. Another way is you can monitor 
conversations through social media. So there's a lot of Facebook groups or events, and you could find um, a group or event within your target audience and start monitoring the conversations, paying attention to what like common questions that they're asking about. Um, and you can you can hear like most of the feedback or their opinions on certain things. And this this has helped me with uh, the language or at least like the terminology, the language that I've used has come from a lot of the Facebook events and uh, the LinkedIn groups and all that. Um, and I, every time I hear something that's repetitive, I try to make that, I try to write it down and make sure I address that in a post or something like that. Um, and then the last thing is to use analytic tools. So uh, every social media platform has an analytics uh, within the posts. So being able to track uh, track website, like how many people are clicking on a specific post or how many people are clicking on your website um, or how many posts are creating this type of engagement. So just being able to track to make sure that what you're putting out um, is resonating with your audience. So the next is, what do you post? So now that you know your audience, like what, how do you start posting on social media? Um, I'm not gonna delve completely into it. I would say we're gonna delve more into social media, more into the specifics in the later webinars, but I'm here to give you a, just a starting point of like what you could uh, do. So specifically with social media, it's really, I think a lot of people want to just start posting, like like if they have a book or if they have anything to promote, they're just ready to just post that right off the bat. And one, the thing is that a lot of people, um, they don't really want to be sold to. A lot of people love buying, but they don't like being sold to. So one way to um, get people to take interest in what you're doing or what you're trying to sell is to build a loyal audience or build a connection with them up front um, because people have to to trust you in order to want to buy from you especially when it comes to a nonfiction book a lot of it's either a personal story or it has to do with ideas and selling ideas does take a longer time to do um, so one way to do it is to share authentic stories and be finding content that connects with the readers or the current target audience that you're trying to target. So I have a couple of ideas when it comes to posting for your readers. Um, I would say it falls into two different buckets. One bucket is just about you yourself um, and talking about your personal stories, anything about you. And I would say it, it does have to relate, um, but I would say to have an overall mission of why you either created the book. Um, I know a, non, a lot of nonfiction authors, they also have other services as well um, alongside their book. So being able to have an overall mission with all the services you offer as well as the book and try to tie that into your personal story. The other bucket is being able to share your process as an author. Um, so you can either share your trials and tribulations. A lot of people are very interested in the author's process. So like you could show like your book cover design if you're getting started. You could share different types of snippets, um, your writing process. And I think like this is, it's really helpful um, up front, especially if you're just starting a book or anything like that. It's a really good way to test your ideas and um and make sure that what you're writing is validates what your readers want to read. So yeah, how to find your target audience. Um, on the next slide, I have some exercises for you. So in order to find your target audience, um, there is a great exercise you can do. Um, and this is like to find your book's topic and purpose. So this is like um, two different 
choose like a to a book's topic and your purpose and you can do this you can write down um like a whole like paragraph on your book's topic like really write down like make yourself notes like okay what is my book about like I said before when you're writing a book in some way or another you kind of lose the overview because you're like you're so deep in the writing process you have so many ideas and it's sometimes hard you know to keep the overview and really um keep like a little distance perspective um and it's sometimes hard for authors to just answer it in, in in a sentence so what is your book about it's like you know and so this little exercise is you write down like a paragraph of okay what's your book's topic take I don't know 10 minutes or so don't overdo it just like don't overthink it really like set yourself an alarm 10 minutes write down my book's topic another 10 minutes write down your book's purpose and after you have like a paragraph each then break it down into one sentence so what's your book about like one one sentence so my book's topic is my book's purpose is and write one sentence and once you did this try to say it use just one word and this is super super difficult like what's the purpose of your book one word what's your book's topic just one word and once you have this and you have it really in front of you on a piece of paper you, you really get like a better understanding, okay, what is the value here? What what can I offer for my readers? So what's really about? Um, and I highly, highly recommend just doing this exercise at least once um, to really get a little bit distance. Or maybe, you know, ask a friend um, who can help you um, or discuss this with someone. So this all, usually like just verbalizing it also helps to get some more clarity. And then the second uh, exercise is um, identifying the main themes, which means the, the chapter of your books like. Um, also, make some notes about what is the main themes. Think about your chapters. Um, what is really what I want to... Oh, my internet's unstable again. What do I really want to like give my readers? What can I present them? So what is like, um, you know, the topics and the purpose and then break a little bit down on the chapters. Um, the third super important part is do like a market research. And I highly recommend doing this. If you need help, like, um, you know, we offer this through our self-publishing agency. We do this for you. Um, but if you want to do it by yourself, like search Amazon, um, put some keywords in which you think um, it's like it's really related to your book. Find other books in your genre. Look how they're presenting themselves, which kind of SEO description text they're using, the cover design. Um, what is super, super interesting and insightful is reading the reviews of your competitor understand your genre like when you scroll down in amazon for example you see like uh, the ranking and the different like categories understand okay um again like finance book you see okay this is like a book about i don't know be a millionaire or whatnot um is this is placed in this category and so on and then click on a category search a little bit the bestseller list and really understand try to understand the book market and try to understand your genre because most people who are drawn to like a specific genre are reading multiple books in this genre and this comes back to the amazon algorithm what i mentioned before you want to be found in this people also buying section from amazon because if you part in this pool then it's easier for amazon to suggest your book to other people and then it's it's other people um, find you easier and your sales go up and your visibility but you have to help amazon um you know and feed the amazon algorithm to really um, be found then the fourth point super important um to you know to understand your reader understand their pain point 
Like, why are they buying your book? Ask questions. Always ask questions like, do you feel you don't live your full potential, for example? Do you feel you could make more money? Um, do you feel, um, you know, you missing out on something? So understand the pain point of your readers and understand. And once you understand your own purpose and the topic of your books, you also can like use the pain point from your readers to give them a solution with your book purpose and your book topics, if this makes sense, right? So really understand um, what your readers lacking and what you can offer them. Um, and then we talked about this also earlier, use or create a persona. Uh, and we have an example of a persona uh, we created. Thank you, Pucha. So this is like a persona we created for some of our clients. Um, and use a photo, you know, you can just like Google something and use a photo, um, then create a name, uh, where they come from, like a little bit the background, um, the education, um, their values, um, and, you know, create like a little, little persona and um, think about this persona as it's like a real person. And maybe it's a friend of yours. Um, and understand what are the cues about, what are their triggers, what are their pain points. Then uh, we use some keywords, which kind of keywords they're using your persona. They're critical about this. They're open about this. Um, to really, you know, to... to take some time um, to really start to understand your reader. And then because once you have like something like this, like a really in-depth persona, it's so much easier to do marketing, to do social media marketing, you know, to really address your reader, to speak with them, because then you really understand them. Yeah. Then, um, Analyze customer readers' feedback. So, and I mentioned this before, like go to Amazon, um, go to like books in your genre, go to like, and have fun with this. Like always also, I'd suggest always have fun with this because um, it's also super interesting when you're publishing a book and you see, oh my God, yeah, it's like they also wrote a book in my genre. Okay, what are people saying? Like read the reviews, what are they liking? What are they disliking? Don't always, don't only read like five star reviews, um, which is important, but also read like the one, two, three stars reviews and really see, okay, what are they want? What are they don't want? Uh, who are they, where they come from and so on. Because you also see like um, the countries they come from and so on. And then you can like nail it down um, for your own book. Um, evaluating competitor. Uh, I think we have also, yeah, like the cover analysis. So this is something we do uh, as well when um, we're publishing or we help people. I'm so sorry. Oh, yeah, no worries. Um, we help when we help people publishing a book when they don't have a cover yet. So we checking like the genre where they're publishing in, um, understand like the best selling uh, books in their genre and then analyzing the covers. So like we looking um, like book title, fonts, um, colors, certain themes, placement. Uh, and you see here like analyze book, it's like eight. In this example, we, um, analyzed like eight different books, like best selling books in the genre. And we also, we not only um, looking for, you know, traditional published, uh, but mainly um, self-published books because, you know, um, it's kind of a different, different approach you have, but um, we usually um, taking both into account, like self-published and uh, published books. Anyway, but if you do it by yourself, um, you know, look at the covers, um, understand um, how they're presenting themselves, look at the metadata, look at the fonts, uh, certain themes, um, the overall competition and so on. Because for example, this example is like, uh, we had an architect client and he wrote a book about tiny houses. So 
in this genre, the covers looks like similar. They all have kind of like a certain theme. And for your genre, for every, every book genre has a certain theme and you have to understand this. Um, one like negative example, I had um, a consulting with a client once um, and he he was like a, a thriller, like a fiction author and he wrote like mostly thrillers. And uh, he had like beautiful covers for his books and so on. And then he started writing nonfiction, but he used like the same um, overall competition, um, competition, uh, composition <laughs> of the thriller theme and genre for his nonfiction book. So, and then he, you know, he couldn't figure it out why his book is not selling because just the cover didn't really spoke to the readers because the cover was like placed in a different genre and not his nonfiction books. And this is super important as well. Understand, you have to understand your readers, you have to understand your genre and then really, you know, uh, place yourself um, regards um, your genre and your readers. Yeah. And then the last point is, um, and this is something from Germany, and um, I included it in understanding your readers, is understanding your readers' milieu. Um, and this is, I found it super, super helpful because um, I think we have a graphic here. Yeah, it's this. So, you know, we have like different kind of social groups. It is what it is. <laughs> um, and you, when you understand your social group, where you're publishing in, this helps you for everything, like book marketing later, really your overall design and so on. And I just give you two examples. Um, we have here one social group called the performers. And performers are usually high achiever. Performers are usually people who buy apples, you know? And when you have, when your target group are in like in a group of the performers, then, and you, you self-publish your book, then you have to also publish your book on um, iApple, like for Apple, because those people usually buy their books on Apple and not on Amazon. You have to understand this because you're missing a huge market when you just book, um, publish your ebook on Amazon, but there's not your target group because your target group of the performers and they're buying Apple products. Or something else like the uh, the second example I want to give you is like the avant-garde cosmopolitan um, this are the people like the new age people like this are the people who you know are conscious or like call them self-conscious and like this is like people who are traveling looking for self-expression they're not like career oriented so you do like um for them, you do like a whole different kind of marketing approach than, for example, for the performers. Performers like it more classic, minimalistic, um, you know, um, a little bit higher, higher priced and so on. And cosmopolitan avant-garde people like it colorful, um, a little bit, um, you know, they're usually traveling, they're living all over the place. Um, they are not interested in the status quo or like, you know, for example, nice Apple products. This is not important, but they are kind of so similar. Uh, but in the same time, so very different in their approach. So if you understand the social groups they come from, this helps so much with targeting um, people and also do the design. Um, and um, yeah, really helps you to, to connect with them. And like I said before, you have to understand yourself first to also understand the people um, you do book marketing for. Yeah, and now we come like to our last last part of our presentation is the do's and don'ts of book marketing. And in from my side, um, from the publishing side, it's really publishing a book without knowing your target group. Because you probably spend, I don't know, months writing a book, then figure out how to self-publishing it, like be very frustrated because you uploaded it and then Amazon gives you all the error messages and so on. Um, it's, it's a hard work, but it doesn't stop 
with writing and publishing. You also have to do like, you know, some market analysis and understand your target group and so on, understand your genre. Um, so the don'ts is just publishing without doing any research, don't understand your genre or your target group. So the do's is, and the first very important step is really figure out your reader's pain point because you can use it in every single social media post. You can ask questions like, do you feel, and so on and so on. Once you understand their pain point, it's like the question coming to you. And you are a writer. You probably can write like fantastic social media point, uh, posts. Then also be clear um, and addressing them in a description text on your Amazon or like the online bookshelf. Like be clear. What's your book about? Um, say it in the first sentence. Don't make like a, don't write a poem <laughs> like in a, for the SMM, uh, SMM, sorry, <laughs> SEO description text for Amazon and so on. You have to be like on point, clear. Um, yeah, this helps best like really for the Amazon algorithm and so on. And then create a cover which really speaks to your readers. Like don't do any experiments. Don't, you know, understand where they come from and which kind of social group there are. And then create a cover which really speaks to your readers. And last but not least, understand uh, what's, what else they are reading and which genre they are usually, um, you know, um, in which genre they are usually, oh, I just have a German word in my head. Anyway, like really understand what else they are reading, which genre they are uh, torn to, and um, this helps you to help them, basically. Yeah, to just make it more, a little bit more visible about, um, you see like the end results of people who understand their widow and who don't. Um, and I, you know, want to show you like three covers and maybe someone can help me with this, like interpret this um, to what you see, like in those different covers. Can you see the target group from each book just through the cover? Does someone wants to wants to do this? Someone up for the challenge? If not, Bucha, do you want to like? Yeah, that's fine. Um, <laughs> so I would say like for The Housemaid, I have read that book. And um, I think so if I didn't read the book, I would think like it's more mysterious or I would think suspense Um, from the first thing I've seen. Because I think like, looking through a doorknob it kind of creates tension and when people look through doorknobs it's not for a good reason so <laughs> I there there's something like mysterious that's going on um in that so I I think they it resonates really well with what it's actually about um for the second one the scarlet letter I I know I've never read it but I I know what it's about and I don't think it resonates. Uh, I would say like the background feels like a romance story. Um, it, it I don't think it, if I picked it up and I had no idea what the Scarlet Letter was, I would think it's like a, just a regular romance novel. And that's, that has nothing. It's completely different from what it is actually about. Yeah. Um, I think the third, I don't think I've ever read this book. Um, I think it, so from what I see on the third book, I can inference that the, the mom probably passed away. Um, and she's grieving her mom. So I, I think it does give context to what it's showing. Yeah. So, um, yeah, and this is just like those three examples show how important it really is to understand your readers and then everything else like follows into place. Like 
you know, how to create, how to target them, which kind of wording you're using um, and how you do like your overall cover design um, and creating like a very good, good, good cover design, which really grabs the, um, the reader's attention. So this is just a little exercise um, to see like, why it's so important to really understand for whom you're writing. So yeah, but in the third webinar, we're going like a little bit deeper into the design and so on and on November 9th. Okay, so I am gonna be focusing on the do's and don'ts of marketing your book involving social media. So I would say the don'ts is, I think um, a lot of people or people who just want to start posting about their book right off the bat, or they want to promote their book right off the bat. And when it comes to building an audience, I would definitely hold off um, promoting your book um, before you, before you build, like you need to build an audience and you need them to want to trust you or want to, want to support you in a way. Um and that comes with time, especially with social media. I would say that uh, another thing is not engaging with your audience enough. So when it comes to social media, it's kind of a two-way street in the same way that if when when you have a close relationship with someone, you it's kind of equal in the sense that you have you talk with them, they t they respond, and it's the same way with social media. If you're not engaging with your audience um they'll probably not will not be able to remember you like long term if you're not consistent with it which brings me to my next point is lack of consistency so not being able to show up um can put you put you um will make people forget you and you won't be on top of people's minds so whenever i talk with people and they want to be on social media um I would view it as a way to connect with people in the same way that a lot of people use networking as a way to uh, talk with more people or uh, get more clients. But it's not you're not guaranteed when you go and show up to a networking event that you're going to get a sale right off the bat. It definitely takes time. But the more consistent you are of showing up, you have the more potential of getting uh, access to more opportunities or sales or whatever goals that you're trying to get with this specific book. So for the do's, uh, one thing, one good thing is providing a sample of your book. And um, I will provide examples of what I mean by that, but it's just giving you a teaser or something for free in exchange of either like you could easily um, create like an email newsletter where you provide a sample of your book and give it as an opt-in, a free opt-in in exchange of their email and then nurture that audience uh, long-term through your email. Another way is using relevant hashtags. So you have a new audience that's searching you and finding you, um, sharing positive reviews. I know it was, it was talked about earlier in the webinar where, well, like I think for it doesn't solely work for Amazon reviews within the algorithm, but it does help with social proof when you have reviews showing that they've received positive results from your book. Um, and then the last, I think, is more personal. So it's just sharing personal stories about either you being a writer, writing your book, or just uh, about you and your overall mission when it comes to your company and your book. So I'm gonna provide a couple of examples. So the first one, so this is an author and she's a self-published author and she's a poet. And this was, she had an Instagram account and how she got found was through her Instagram account. And every single day she posted a piece of her poems and just posted it, posted it. And that's how she blew up on Instagram. And that's how she markets most of her books is just putting poems through every post that she creates. So this is one way of sampling your book. Um, and you could easily just give like a couple of captions 
um, probably, I know it's going to be a little bit different because this is, this is not nonfiction, but you could easily give like one concept away or one, like a couple of sentences or something that's like impactful that makes people stop and like think for a second. Um, and that could easily help you and entice people to want to read more. And it's kind of just giving a little teaser of your book without giving everything away. The next example um, is Daniel Priestley and he he does a lot of things. So his overall mission is helping um, businesses scale up and he has different programs to at different levels to scale people up in their business. So he has many different books and what he does is he has a lot of webinars that he invites people to go on. And if you go on that, on that webinar, he gives his book for free and you can, I've had, I think he has at least four or five books and I've gone to a lot of his webinars. So I, I basically have gotten all his books for free. Um, obviously like he has, he can break that expense and he can afford to do all of that. Um, but you can do it at a smaller rate. You can give a chapter of your book for free um, in exchange for something else. Another way it, that he does, um, he promotes his book is just by discussing simple principles in his book as well. So in one of the videos, it's five ways to become oversubscribed. So he's, he's giving the five concepts in his book um, in a video format, because not everyone likes reading as well. Some people like the video format and would rather just see that. Um, and then he kind of gives all of his concepts in the book or in the video, but then people still want to buy the book because they want to read more context to all those five principles. So when it comes to like social media, you don't have to necessarily promote the book itself. It You're not limited on just promoting the book. You can promote the ideas that come for the book and repurpose it in different ways and then just put it on social media and promote it. Yeah, thank you so much. That's about it <laughs> from us. Um... Do you guys have any questions? <laughs> yeah, next time. Um... Okay, um, good. If Ah, uh, do you have a question? There's a hand. Um... Hi, hi, Wuke. Hi, hi, hi Pooja. Um, I just had a question. You mentioned about like reviews are not as important on Amazon for like um for the algorithm and for mm -hmm. searching in different categories. If you if you launch a book, say you're self publishing and you launch a book, mm -hmm. and you, you mentioned about sales being super important, is there any is there any kind of tactics or strategies you can recommend to try and increase getting more sales on your book so that you can start to um, move further in the categories that you're kind of um, yeah. listed in? So, um, so the Amazon algorithm works like this. If you have like a constant, like over a few days, like let's say five to 10 days, if you have constant sales, then Amazon notice your book and then it starts suggesting you to other readers, you know, but if a book has no sales at all, it doesn't start um, recommending your book. And having this in mind, this is the reason why reviews are not so important because it's Amazon algorithm needs to have the data. And some a strategy would be if you launch your book, then you like put it on pre-sales do marketing for it. And then on the day of the launch, for example, um, you get like, you know, you get some momentum and then Amazon 
takes over and you want to reach this this point when amazon takes over because then amazon basically do uh, free marketing for you um, another way to reach this point is um, you can offer your book for a week or so a little bit cheaper um, and then run a promotion on social media. So make like a week long promotion, say, hey, my book is like 50% um, cheaper than usual, la la la, and do the promotion and then get some more sales in and hope that Amazon um, pick up. You don't want to do it too often. Like I wouldn't do it I would take at least like three months in between for every new promotion. Um, but yeah, this is this kind of ways um, to do it. Thank you. I appreciate that. You're welcome. Yeah. Someone else a question? um yeah we hope we see you again in two weeks <laughs> and then we talk a little bit like going a little bit deeper in uh you know the keywords and everything the, the technical sides of it and then in five weeks um we're talking more about the branding and posting and so on yeah but thank you all for coming uh, to our webinar and we hope to see you at the next one. Yeah, have a beautiful day wherever you are. <laughs>